Okay, off we go. Oh, I've got my... Should I keep my face cam up? I don't know, I haven't done a DOS programming thing with my face cam. You can see tissues and stuff. That's cool. Kind of gross. I think I'll turn the face cam off for consistency because I just look trash at the moment. So news over, back to DOS. So, DOS time. What did we do last time? We started working on tests. Um, and we got caught up in it because the MTU and MRU were two separate things, but they kind of affected each other. So we're going to write two separate tests. So if I can find the code, is it this test drive C bot? Okay, I have a test.py there. So, if we do test.py, what happens? Okay, so the first issue is that it tries all these different combinations, which is not what we want. We only want to check a few different combinations or ranges or whatever, and we want to check them in different orders. So the first thing we're going to start out with is testing the amount that it can receive, the amount that the bot can receive. Um, let's also catch that, what is it, keyboard interrupt and actually kill things properly. Um, what is this? Try catch keyboard interrupt or is it accept keyboard interrupt? Um, and then we will just pass that. There we go. So let's see, test. All right, and that kills it. Good. So next up, um, we're going to go to our bot code, our test code and have a look at what it's actually doing. So we have test and we're just going to rewrite it to just, I'm not sure. Um, we might have a thing that checks which mode to run the test in, but for now we're just going to do, um, I guess the input stuff. So, uh, we might also, no, we're not going to use serial for this or anything. So we get a packet. Um, if the packet's too big, we do, we print that, that it's an issue. Otherwise we print back an amount. So we're just going to not do that. And we're just going to echo something to say that we received it. So we're testing that we can receive packets, um, of a certain size. Oh, love PG is streaming. I should just quit my stream. So we're going to remove start. And we're going to reply by saying, um, let's just copy and paste that. Um, we'll just reply with, um, got data. I, um, got length. Uh, got TCP payload length I. Um, and that should be fine. Um, now, let's try that again. And let's also edit our test so we print what we receive. Um, let's comment that out. Gonna have to W make it, I think. I probably should open my bot. Uh, the, I should open DOS and W make it there. Okay, we should 
wrap all this DOSBox stuff here like that. So let's go to WMake. All right, and so we have an error for that. So copy and paste thing did not just work for that. Let's go back and have a look. Buff is the buffer. We already have that. Data is already there. And let's just print uh, that. And it says start length and user data has not been prepared. So it's actually, we're not gonna do a mem copy there because we're also just printing into that. Start has not been declared line 50. Uh, we'll just skip that for now. We'll just say how much we received. And then we have to enqueue the uh, buffer. Oh, and we need the length variable as well. Okay, so we probably need all that as well. Is that gonna work? Okay, so let's try running that as a test. So that seems to halt. Got TCP payload. Um, payload length. Did that cut off after writing TCP payload? Payload length. Oh, it's too long. Um, let's just up that to 32, I guess. And let's do the test again. So it got payload length seven. And then it times out, not good. So that all does look correct. User data and data are different. I should be copying to buff, I think. Um, and we have user data and data there, which we probably don't need. So let's try this, try W making this. And let's run test again. Okay, let's read the code. I'm freeing the packet up here. That's not good, is it? But that shouldn't affect things. We have the IP, then we get the payload, and then we get the length, and then the buffer here is our TCP buffer. And that's not the actual buffer. We need to grab our data there and then write to data. And then, yes, we'll put the buffer free over here at the end. So this should be fine. Let's run test again after it finishes building. All right, it always says seven. Um, probably because I'm calculating it wrong. Got TCP payload length seven. Am I always sending seven? Um, hmm. Length is the payload length minus the TCP get header length. I is then printed with length and it always says seven. What? We'll also remove this test 
nothing since we're not doing read back. Oh, we're always sending nothing. Okay. Don't do that. And we'll change this from got TCP payload length to just, I will leave it like that. That seems fine. So each time we receive, um, the length, the message back should be, um, uh, we'll rename that status. The status should be 32 bytes. So if it doesn't equal that, um, we'll just print a little message saying status doesn't equals 32. And then we'll print the status here. Okay, that seemed to W make it, or did it? No, because I didn't change anything there, right? So let's test this. All right, so it's doing all of those. And so next thing we want to do is read in uh, we want to pass it to get the number out. So how do we do Python pass string? Not that Python read number from string. Uh, it wants regex. I might be thinking too much about this actually. It should be something like um, so got TCP payload length. It should be like uh, num equals uh, uh, what would it be? It would be the like um, fifth word or something like one, two, three, four so if we do status dot split space, um, then we take, I don't know, one, two, three, four, or let's print the number there. Bytes like, bytes like object is required, not string. Okay, that seems fair. Um, and then we will split, we'll also split it by new line, uh, N, the new line thing. Okay, we can't do that because, I don't know, we can't split it twice. Let's do, so we will split the result and then take zero. So we should get just the number. Okay, and then we shall do int. And we might need to do string first. This is horrible code. I don't like this. Um, so if num doesn't equal i expected, um, then we'll just put i got i, and then we'll format that with um, i and num. And let's see how well that works. Right. Um, excuse me. Invalid literal for int with base 10 B1. I thought I converted that. Okay. We might need to decode UTF-8, something like that. Okay. So now it's trying the bytes. And we'll see when it fails. But as you can see, there's like uh, a lot of bytes that we're wasting time on. And we can see the fragmentation here, um, which is where the expectation happens um, or slurp or something. So ideally we want 
Um, hmm. We want fragmentation around there. So how do we test this part? Um, let's write a function called, um, uh, I'm not too sure yet. We'll have to wrap a lot of this, but if we go to our DOS box or whatever, our DOS box configuration, we'll look at the MTCP one. No, that's only for output, isn't it? Right. So DOSBox x.config, the MTU and MRU are 576. Um, so let's change that. Does MTCP set the correct values? Let's see, let's look at the test log. MTU is 420, MSS is 420. Huh? Oh, that might be old. Let's do a new one. Am I hard defining them somewhere? Let's have a look. MTU is 420, MSS is 420. So let's check mtcp.configuration. Um, we have max TCP size. So we'll use that in our test program. Um, so we'll do Max, are we going to write input or output? Max input size is 420 and the MSS is equal for some reason. I'm not sure what I did last stream. Did I set it in the test IO? Um, does not look like it. Hmm. Why would it be set to 420? It should be set to something smaller. Um, so let's head on to TCP lib. Let's go to tcp.cpp. Um, and so look for MSS. Let's just grep for MSS instead. That seems like a better idea, right? Uh, it looks like I've edited the uh, TCP socket and thing. Of course. So let's do W make. I'll adjust my chair because it's getting a little bit low. And then let's rerun the tests and look at the maximum send size or whatever we're going to call it 380 so our tests are going to kind of work like this we're going to send some stuff that is under max input size, such as zero, one, those are some magic numbers, 10, 20, 100, 200, 300, 400, 
And then we will kind of zoom in to 410, 418, 419, uh, 420. So these should all work. These numbers should all work and they should work in random order. Um, but since this is a kind of unit test, we will just shuffle them. Um, uh, it might be better to just kind of do it once than do it again or tell it to shuffle at one time. Then we want to send some stuff that is over max input size, such as 421, 450, 460, uh, 500, 600, 1500, and then 2000. And that should not cause, that will obviously, that should turn into multiple packets or no packets. Um, in fact, it should not be received correctly. So these are what we would call expected failures, um, expected success. And we will, <coughs> hey again, Kaz, what's up? And so we will test for these. So let's factor this out a bit. Um, we can actually turn this into a little, um, yeah, no more juke cam. That's only for the news cam. So let's write success tests there. Understandable. Yeah, there's a peak at the start of the DOS uh, programming, but I decided not to. Trying zero bytes, so zero bytes, I don't know, that seems to work. Zero bytes timed out, and that makes sense. Zero doesn't make sense. What does it mean to send zero bytes? It doesn't mean anything. Does it? Can you send TCP with a payload of zero? I don't think so. Okay, so they're not, they're actually expected failures. So, um, failure tests. Um, so let's see, what have we got here? We have code here and so we have trying i bytes um and we have success tests and failure tests let's do that in all tests and then we'll run success tests again and then failure tests again and we'll mix them up um, can we shuffle that? Uh, what, what do we call it? Python three, one, two, three dot shuffle. Shuffle. Can we not shuffle things in Python? Um, I don't know. Listen, listen to whatever you want. I don't care. We're not going to shuffle this. Um, actually, no, let's import it. Uh, import random and it will be random dot shuffle. Um, random dot shuffle all tests. And so we'll just see what happens now if it actually tries to do random ones. None type is not iterable. Um, excuse me. So import random, random dot shuffle, one, two, three. 
Oh, shit. Are you kidding me? It shuffles it in place? Alright. That's really weird. So here we go. We've got some tests that are meant to fail. Okay, good. So, timed out. Um, so, if I is in... Have I tried Googling? So let's see. So here we have some more chatty stuff. Um, when we do trying X bytes and we get, um, and we don't get the same amount back, we want to check that, um, we want to kind of receive as much as possible. Um, so how do we do that? How do we receive as much as possible? Or we could add a kind of loop. Um, so if it doesn't equal receive all, yeah, so I might do something like that. Let's just feel let's just fact this out a bit. Um, let's see. We probably want get uh, next packet. Um, con. And all that will do is do that. And... We will return um, packet. We will return the packet. Otherwise, we will return none. All right, so we will do status equals get next packet connection. Um, and then we will do if status, then we check the length and stuff there. Otherwise it, it times out. So let's just make sure that works. Okay. And so if I equals max input size, Um, we can actually do while I equals max input size, um, while num equals max input size, and then we'll just copy and paste this code here. Um, and then let's see if that works. Hmm. Now we need a different branch for that, I think. Um, let's see. If it's the maximum input size, and that means it's possibly fragmented. No, we need to basically do this loop until there's nothing left. Um, and we'll add a timeout for that here. So timeout. Uh, timeout. And so what we'll do is um, hmm. We need to decouple the cap the packet management from this. 
So if the length of the packet is not 32, then that's not correct. And then we get the number. And then what we should do is def read packet number um, packet and put this code in it. And we'll just name it status so we can copy and paste. Return num. So num equals read packet number status. Um, we should probably read all the statuses, right? So we read one status. We should probably make this like we read as many packets as we need. Um, so Hmm. So we send something here. We're in a good state here, but when we get something back, we're going to want to read as many packets as we can. So, uh, nums equals, um, we'll start with the current packet and then we'll do status equals none, or I'm not sure how while loops in Python really work. I would really appreciate if we could just map this. <coughs> um, next num, uh, next packet equals get next packet. And then we'll just set the timeout to 0 0.1. While next packet doesn't equals none, nums plus equals read next packet. There we go. And then we just do next packet again. So Let's also print nums and then we'll just ignore testing it at the moment and see what happens. Okay, that's interesting. So 2000 bytes is apparently 420 plus 420 plus 420 plus 420 is 600. 1680, which is not the amount we want. So let's try upping that time to maybe one second. We have time to spare at the moment. Nope, 2000 is really doing the buffer thing. Hey, Arya, what's up? Good morning. So let's see. What the Okay. Just woke up and got this notification. Well, that's cool. I'm doing some unit testing on my DOS bot. So if we try and send it 1500 bytes, we get back, it receives it in as 1680. Is that a... Is that a coincidence that it's four of them? Let's like add 01 to that. And that should... Um, let's see if it runs 1500 first. Yeah, that's getting truncated. A packet with 1500 is getting truncated. All right, so we will worry about that later. But right now what we want to do is test 
that um, if if I is in which type of tests? Success tests. Then if nums doesn't equal just the payload, um, print, yeah, well, we shall print expected. I got nums. So that should give us errors. Yep. See you later uh, soon. And then we'll do coffee. If it's in failure tests, then nums must be fragmented. Um, which should equal, it should, it should all add up to I, I would believe. So what we will do is add them all together. So sum equals zero. Um, Jesus Christ, how do you add, is there a function for a list sum? Okay, if the sum of the numbers doesn't equal I expected I total got that and then we'll just write the sum uh, as its own variables. Would you nya? No. So that should be our tests thing. Sums is, oh, sorry, it should be sum. Number is required, not a list. All right. Um, I just put an S there, I guess. Should that use the repra command? Yeah, so we have some errors here. 460 gives us a sum of 840. Um, is this because we're... Let's stop shuffling them so we can be a bit more uh, thoughtful about how we're doing this. So, success tests, 420 failure tests. So it reads 420 twice in all of those. Is it just not reading it properly? Um, huh. It is not. So 1500 is not working. Okay, we can shuffle these again. 1500 might be a bit weird, but I'm not sure. So let's shuffle it. So we have our tests now. And... We have some errors. So... So 
for some reason we can't send something that is 2000 long. Could that be due to buffers? Packet buffers, four. So if we change that to five and W make, uh, will that possibly change that behavior? And at the same time, it shouldn't, you know, crash. It should instead just drop the packet. Let's go back and look at our test program. Oh, we're running that in Vim, aren't we? So this looks kind of good. It seems to be working okay. Um, so 2000. So anything over, say, 420 times 4 should get truncated. So 1680. Um, so, input stream, uh, input buffers equals four. So, we'll write, uh, we should probably add 1680 as special value tests, 1680, 1681, 16, 79 and so if um if i greater than 1680 sum equals um if i is greater than 1680 then we'll just set i to 1680 and see that because that's what we expect All right, well, at least it, it's not going to be like that now. Hmm? What just happened? So packet buffers five is not helping. So I guess 1680 is just a limit. I don't know why there's a limit. But we would just assume that the limit is a real limit or something. Maybe it's TCP. I don't know. But 1680 should be... our big limit there. So if, so if, if I is greater than 1680 or max input buffer, buffered, we shall set to I to max in um, buffered. which is a huge violation of variables, but. That should fix all our tests so far. Let's wait for that to compile. And then we'll start to start debugging a failure. All 
I don't know how we'll do that. But we shall. And then we will have to handle the output size after this. With a separate kind of branching thing where we send it a number and then um, we read the amount, I guess. Okay, so let's run the test again. So it seems that when we run 1680 and then 420, it fails. Uh, we kind of know what happens. Packets that are bigger seem to kind of mess up the buffer. Um, so let's see if we can fix that using an MTU or something. So MTU equals 420. Let's see if changing this in DOSBox helps. It's maybe it's working. Wait, what? No, hang on a second. It shouldn't time out ever. Um, it should always work. What are my tests here? Value test should be, um, what the hell, uh, fragment. There, this should always work. All right, let's try setting the MTU to 419 then. Because we found that 421 bytes works, 1679 does not. Going for 2000 times things out, which could... Mm, which could be just a symptom of things being too much. So um, let's actually remove tests that are like way too big for now. Which could kind of hint towards part of the issue that we have here. Fifteen hundred doesn't work either. Let's try doing some more tests. So we have a state here where it seems to work. Um, why is that? Well, because Slurp is fragmenting it for us. We are not getting packets that are too big. That's what we want, I believe. However, 1500 is not working. In fact, larger ones do not work. So it could be that 1678 or bigger are going to cause issues. Let's 
why is that happening? It's fragmenting to 420, then 420, then 418, then 418. What? Okay. So let's identify the bad cases that we have. 2000 bad. Um, 1678, that should be good, right? Fifteen hundred does not work. Why is that? Okay, let's try and figure this out. Maybe my math is wrong. Fifteen hundred would be fifteen hundred divided by four twenty. That would be under that amount of packets. However, the fragmentation is for the entire packet, isn't it? not just TCP, but the TCP, like the actual, this is the payload stuff. So what? Um, is that to do with TCP window size? Hmm. Let's see where this starts being a problem. You also don't need to fragment these tests or anything, do we? We just need to check if it's, if it's actually, we don't need to have a weird if statement to check um, based on like separating if it's fragmented or not. We just need to calculate whether it's fragmented. That's gonna take a while. So let's um, kind of do it by tens. Uh, that's still too still by hundreds for now and kind of bisect this problem 600 700 800 900 a thousand breaks really so um It'd be 99, then 100, I guess. Or it'd be 90, yeah, 99, 100. That would be the range we want to really kind of test. Or 95 and 101. So 960 causes issues, maybe? Let's go down to 90. 900, so, hang on, let's change the, hmm. oh, that might be too slow there, hang on. See, something strange is happening here where it seems like it might be fragmenting. It does 900 bytes and that reads the packet fine, but it doesn't read any more packets. Like we're giving it time here. And then we read 910 
and it gives back 420. Um, so when does this start happening? Um, let's head on down to 500. So 850, maybe. So 881, and then we'll go up to that. Um, so let's do, what was it? 840, and then we'll do it up to 900. Eight forty one bytes. This is interesting because eight forty happens to be four twenty times two. So eight forty works. Then if we go higher than four twenty times two, something happens there. And then It's just returning 420 um, with no fragmentation. Okay, well, let's add that to our tests, I guess. We'll just make them all tests now. Um, eight thirty nine, eight forty, eight forty one. There we go. So let's try that. Oh, did I not change that to all tests? Something is strange with fragmentation here. What if we set the MTU to like 419 or 400? Does that change the results that we get? Sixteen seventy nine gives us sixteen seventy eight. 1500 gives us 1320. And then it times out. Do we have two bugs here or one bug? Because with 1500 and stuff, um, that gives us four of them, but then sometimes we only get one. And 2000, trying 2000 bytes, what does that do? How about we just print um, the numbers we get back for each test? So we try 450 and we get 420 plus 30, which is 450. 
then 600 gives us 420 plus 180. Yeah. 1681 gives us 420 plus 420. 841 gives us 420 plus 420. But the MTU is... Is it possible that this, this slurp value MTU is not what we are actually wanting to do? Is it actually having any effect? Uh, where's my terminal? Where is MTCP's MTU coming from? It's probably calculated from our stuff, right? And if we disable the slurp modifications, we get the same result. Is slurp even doing anything? Is DOSBox even doing anything? Am I even using the right DOSBox file? No, I'm not. Wouldn't that help if I tested with the correct file? All right, let's turn these off and let's do MTU equals 300. You know what, we actually don't care about that either. Let's just always check the sums. We don't care if it gets fragmented. We just care that it, it gets um, handled. And then 840 has an issue with 720. What if I set the MTU to, I don't know, 100? That's ridiculous. So the MTU has a relation and it looks like all the issues here are related to the MTU cutting off. So if we set this to 420 and max input buffer would then be correct, wouldn't it? It would be max input size times four, I believe, four TCP packets. We might have to add 360. Uh, we might need to bump it up. What's uh? 420 minus 360. So 420 plus 60 equals 480. So let's set the MTU to 480. And then in some cases, Sixteen seventy nine gives 
a grouping, I think. We should probably just... We should probably control to see if this is an actual... Alright, so... 1678 gives us 420 plus 420 plus 418 plus 418. And then 1679 gets 420 plus 420 plus 419 plus 419. And in both cases, they freeze over. Um, why would... Why would 1681 only give 420, 420 back? But 1679 give 420, 420, 419, 419. Something doesn't make sense here. Um, what we'll do is we'll make a list of the, uh, you know, what we can do, um, if there's a foul, if there's a whatever, we can just do, we can print all tests. Or we can do, uh, yeah, let's just print all tests at the start. What is this here? So trying 2000 bytes should never work. So let's do, oops, all tests equals that. And so this should be deterministic. Oops, I shouldn't shuffle them, should I? Shuffling isn't very deterministic. So 2000 always gets 420 plus 420 plus 420 plus 420. So let's step down 1679. And that gives 420, 420, 419, 419. And is that the same as 1679? So 1679 gave us this. We get this error. 420, 420, 419, 419, 419. So it's one error. Then we do 1681. What error is that? All right. Sixteen eighty one. Let's remove this 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 weird expectation check about the amount buffered. We won't worry about that for now. So sixteen seventy nine. Um, then let's head on over to this. 10, 89, 1678 gives us 1676. Then if we run 1678, that should give us 1676. Yep. Um, what about 1500? Basically, I'm trying to figure out 1500 gives 1320. Um, I'm trying to figure out if there's any correlation between the ordering of the inputs. 
Um, but this isn't really a good way to go about it, is it? So, here's what we'll do. Um, let's hit this with a hammer. Um, we'll do, we have a main here. And we have our tests here and we have our shuffle here. Oh, we can't really test that this is independent. Oh, yes, we can. We'll just shuffle stuff again. So, um, when we do all tests, we shuffle all tests and then we run main. And then if we time out, we will return zero. And if we have a bad time, we'll return zero. And... Let's just do while true, we shuffle it, then we run main. Max input buffered. Yeah, okay, it shouldn't be like that. All right, so this is going to do some whole bunch of stuff. We're going to call that hammer.log. Is that not going to run? Is that running? Hammer.log, no. Oh, I killed Vim. Sorry, Vim. So let's see. We run test.py and then we grep expected. Maybe we just can't pipe it out. That'd be weird. Let's do test.py now. Is that gonna... Nope, so it doesn't want to uh, do anything. That's okay. So we'll just do... Oh, it was doing something there? Maybe? It was killing DOSBox. Oh, it was running, but it just wasn't syncing it, okay. So let's let it run a little bit. Um, and then close. And let's look at the hammer. It is, it, that T did not work. Okay. Let's just log this way. Okay, so that's just not working well. Okay, it's doing weird stuff. So we're not gonna try logging this, we're just gonna read it as it happens. Sixteen seventy eight always goes to sixteen seventy six. Five hundred goes to thirteen twenty. Fifteen hundred. All right, let's just write this down. So fifteen hundred. Thirteen twenty. Sixteen eight eighty. Ten times out. Uh, 
Okay, let's try and read this data. This is not the appropriate amount of data that we want. Um, so here we go. Oh, I can do that. I can snap windows up like that. Okay, I'll try. Yeah, edge of the screen. Got it. So let's see. 1681 equals 840. Got it. 1678 equals 1676. Correct, correct. 1500 equals 1320. Yep. 1679 equals 1678. 1617, 1678, yeah. 1678 equals 1676. Oh no, that, that's already true. So 79, 7, 16, 76. Sixteen seventy eight. Now there was one that timed out, wasn't there? So the one that timed out was sixteen eighty, I believe. So let's watch this and write as it goes. 81, 840, yep. 80 times out. Uh, 81 equals 1500 plus 1320. 2000 gives us 1680. Alright, so we have some interesting things here. some bugs at the very least. And I guess we'll keep our random shuffle test thing. So a packet with length 1681 fails and then it will do a timeout. 1680 times out. So there's some kind of multiplication there but all of these are timing out afterwards so i guess a good question is what's the first one that times out is it 16 it's not 1679 so um i guess 420 times 4 minus 10 to 420 times 4 plus 10. If this is a packet issue or something, then um, this should be what the issue is. Uh, sorry, a buffering issue on MPCP side, then... Hmm? Is there some overhead? from TCP fragments. Oh, there must be, right. TCP fragment overhead. There's segments and stuff too.
Or is there actual TCP fragmentation happening here? Slurp is fragmenting it. What is actually happening? They can probably figure this out, can't we, using some debug tools. So, when does this start? Oh no. We just need one example and to drill into that. So let's try doing that. Let's pick whatever comes up first. See, 420, 419 gives 839. That's correct. That gives us the whole payload. 1500. And that gives us an error. So 1500 A's, we lose a lot. We lose a lot more than we should. So, is this due to slurp? If we disable the MTU in slurp, what happens? Could that actually be causing problems? Well, that doesn't cause problems per se. Oh, shit. MTU is not the TCP MTU, is it? Although it seems that way. Uh, what's 480 plus, I guess, 80? That's 560. I think the overhead is like 80 or something. Or 40. It's probably 40. Uh, so that'd be 520. Although we already added stuff for the overhead. Huh? 450 now times out if I set the MTU to 520. That's weird. 450 times out if the MTU is 520. Let's try and approach that a little harder. So we'll send 550 bytes. Great. Now let's add, what was that, 520? And that hangs it. Why? That should fragment it. What could possibly be happening there? I guess it's time for us to dig into this, huh? All right. So let's start up Netcat. And let's go to MTCP. Um, what do we have here? Um, debug, DHCP. Oh, we have logging, don't we? Hang on. Why am I not reading the logs? Docs. Not docs. Drive C code. Test.log. So MTU is 420. MSS is 380. 
So what happens? We're not getting the packet. The payload length is zero. Is this slurp hurting us? It could be. We're spending a lot of time dealing with slurp. Way too much time. We might just want to try and take it out of the equation here. Um, where instead of having slurp or something, we just, yeah, big slurps. Um, well, no, because, well, the fundamental issue here that slurp is helping cover up is that sometimes it will hang in time out. So perhaps we should just try and fix that instead. Like, changing the MTU here just changes what slurp fragments. But it makes no sense that it kind of ends up with nothing. Okay, well, we have our Let's do, is it SNTP? No, let's do netcat. Um, no, we're not gonna use netcat. Let's just use our test program again. Let's make sure we run it again. Oops. So we have MTU of 520. We try transferring five, 450 bytes and what do we get in the log? Nothing helpful. Let's do some manual testing again. Or, hmm, is there slurp debugging? It's hard because we, we don't have debug. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to debug it from the perspective of the application. We have a broken input. And so we're just going to start debugging it whenever we get a packet or something like that. So we have our program that runs the test, um, but we're not going to use that. We're going to go with our test com file. Um, and we're going to do netcat 666. We have our test. We do A. And we're just going to copy all the A's till we see what happens. 172. 229, 400, and that hangs. So it's hanging now. What is it doing hanging? Uh, so I should have probably started the debugger, but we'll do that now. 
Is it overflowing the buffer? Um, let's see. We'll do wdtest.com. Yeah. And let's just do run. How do you break this? Oops. I don't know how to freaking interrupt uh, what com. Oh, it might be in here. Can we send a break? Send special key. So we have some keys there. So let's run, go, main, send special key. Send, control break. Send control escape. Um, what com debug interrupt. There should be a button that we can press to break back in. Um, what com debugger? I'm just searching this um, break while running in Google. Key. What com C plus plus program is back? So let's see. Debug. How do I go to next? Okay, next. So we're not doing it under Windows. Uh, why? Let's just try hitting some keys. F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Control F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No. 12, escape, send special key, control, alt, delete, that rebooted the machine. Uh, we will look at the manual in a second. But let's go to help, contents. Um, starting up the debugger. So that's breakpoints. Do we want the break menu? So let's go back. Break window. Remote debugging, interrupting a running program. Press the print screen key. What? Okay. So let's run. 
uh, main send special key. Uh, what is my print screen on my keyboard? <laughs> Was that it? All right, well, that's not helpful, is it? I just pressed the print screen key. So how do we, how do we send the print screen key? Okay. Um, how's your day been? Okay. So, can I bind multiple ones? Do we have to unbind Linux's print screen key? Okay, hang on a second. Look and feel, administration, hardware, is it in keyboard shortcuts? Let's try and disable it. Okay, let's remove that. We can't remove that. Okay, well, I'll just change it to control plus. Uh, control plus print. Okay. Print. There we go. We did it. We actually did it. I think. All right. So let's just send an overly long packet. And now let's try interrupting it. We're in process packets. Okay. Um, continue. We're still in process packets. So we're not getting a packet, are we? Huh? But if we do test, Okay, let's, let's do some breaking, huh? If I can find the, the print screen key, it doesn't work anymore. That's fine. I'm not angry. We're not gonna be angry today. We're gonna be calm. I'm going to be collected and we're going to start debugging this the hard way. The task was not loaded, file not found, what? Oh. My life is collapsing in front of my eyes. I keep getting emails, spam, but it's like deposited in my account no no okay so we're going to head on over to we're going to break when we do packet process single tcp drive packets actually let's look at what this does so packet process signal we don't it's not time to install updates so what happens when we run packet process single Packet process. We're going to install um, AG because I keep writing it. And I've just given up. 
I can't change my habits. I'm sorry. Oh, Ubuntu. Okay. Packet process single. So we're in a situation where we're, we're waiting for, well, we're waiting for a packet and the packet is not coming. But something is happening. Something is causing the next packet to not get queued. So how do packets get queued? Not there. We're probably looking at DQ. This is complex code. I don't understand what the hell I'm doing. Um, clear cues. I guess it has to get buffered, right? That seems important. So, set receive buffer. And Q, XMIT buff. Resend packet, send packet. We're not doing any sending, we're doing receiving. Is this the wrong place to be doing it? We have process here. We have process two. And that has incoming data length. So where does process two run? Or is that with owning sockets? Uh, okay, let's just move to packet then. When we get a packet, um, It should be in queued, I guess. I would hope. So, packet send packet, packet process internal. Um, and then it says packet received here. So let's just confirm that we're going to hit packet process internal. So, break new. Um, Control, um, sorry, shift back, alt S for symbol. Packet process internal, P. Here we go. Um, and we're just gonna unconditionally break here. Unknown symbol W. What the fuck do you want me to do? That's why. Okay, we're gonna try a different way where we go to the symbol and then put a breakpoint there. So let's go code functions packet process internal. And then we break there. Okay, and that works for some reason. How do we close this window? Okay. I better learn this. So, window. Uh, 
uh, I don't think I have window controls. Debugger windows. Next. Each window has a close button. Not this one. What? Is it, is it this? I don't have a mouse in DOS, do I? Oh, I kind of do. I have a scroll wheel. Um, shift escape. Control W. Don't give up, you have so much to live for. I just want the window to close. Action. File. Window options. No. Is this what happens when, like, accessibility fails? Um, okay, we can probably just tab between windows, right? Shift tab. Control tab. Yeah. There we go. Um, so we're going to break here. Where's packet process internal? This is my code, isn't it? Uh... Okay, we're just going to run the program. Go. We already have a packet. All right, go. Go. Unable to connect to host. Why did I do that? Okay, F5 to run. F5, 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 F5. So it keeps running where we are now do exit with message maybe i need to restart it have you tried turning your computer on and off again um i feel like i should yeah break there Uh, just go. All right, so we're at packet process internal in the source code. Mm -hmm. And here we go. So now let's send our big boy packet and see what happens. Nothing. Nothing happens. If I do a little one, what happens then? So little packet, that works. Um, what if we have a big packet? That is just getting dropped, is it? How? How is that getting ignored that still gets to it doesn't it what runs packet process internal tcp inc utils.h process Internal? So if the buffer first does not equal buffer next, then it processes it. I guess that means there's been a packet. Um, I 
I guess. How do we, okay, so the interrupt probably does something. But I don't want to break in an interrupt, so let's read the code. If r.w.ax equals zero. That's the registers. So buffer next plus plus, if it equals the packet RB size, what's packet RB sized? Oh, the amount of packets. So what does this do? When the receiver interrupt happens, it puts it in the queue. And if there's too many, then it goes back to zero. Oh, it's a ring buffer. So yeah, that makes sense. There's a ring buffer of packets. And then later, we want to look at that ring buffer. So is that what we do in process internal? Yeah. And process internal only happens if the ring buffer is, has changed. So if the first doesn't equal next, so it checks that there's something in the ring buffer and then it pack and it processes it. Therefore, if we're not hitting that when we send something, like we go run, run. Okay. That just closed DOS box. The hell it just said that it got TCP payload length 360. All right. So we're going to do break. Sorry, code functions internal. Going to break there. Um, then we're going to go back to our source code. Going to continue on. We have packets there and it didn't connect to the host because I'm not that cool. File, open. Yeah, let's open that program again. Code functions, yeah. Have I tried injecting HTML? What? Has this frozen? Yeah. That's fine. Ooh. I'm not angry. I'm not mad. Just to be clear, I'm not mad at all. So we're going to go to code functions and we're going to look for internal break there um does alt x close the window no i don't know why i thought it would i'm a fool okay go 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 so that puts a packet in the queue nice Two packets even, and then it crashed. It crashed. Uh, 
I did not want it to crash. <laughs> Giving mixed signals here. I'm not mad. I just wanted to be clear that I'm not mad. On behalf of all viewers, we believe you. Okay. Back to our receiver. Where do we set the interrupt for this? So, we set the interrupt here. I think. Maybe. So we're not getting packets in the ring buffer sometimes. That's fine. That's fine. I'm just going to have a quick break and I'm not mad, but I want, I just need to have a quick, a quick, not mad break. Is that okay? Just need to go get some perspective. <laughs> a calm nap. Yeah. Uh, one second. Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm a little bit mad. Um, this is a perplexing issue. Um, I, I lied a little tiny bit. I am a liar. Um... We need to just think for a second. Let's sit down and think at what we, what, what we're being told here. So we have our test program here. Um, we have a test. We run the test and it times out. Now, this timing out is related in some way to the MTU specified here, which is 520. So 450, um, we don't know the exact number, but we do know that this is a failure case. So we now have to try and understand not, not the set of data, of which it fails, but the actual reason it fails. Um, we have seen that perhaps a packet is not being delivered. So we need to confirm that. So let's do that now. Let's confirm that the packet of size 450 is not being delivered. So we're going to have to do this one manually. Um, so let's do this. Now, because of the way things work, we don't have a clear way to figure out if the packet is being delivered or not. However, the fact that there isn't a response heavily implies that. And the fact that we haven't had packet process packet or process internal fire um, implies that. 
but just to be thorough enough, let's just figure this out. So we have an outcat. We're going to run our test program and we're going to send it um, a payload of 450 times a um, we're going to have one for the new line. So let's jam that in and nothing happens. Now, if we do test, also nothing happens. So what does this tell us? Nothing because we didn't use the debugger, which is fine, but it tells us that our code is not getting the packet. So let's go level up. Let's look at MTCP. Is MTCP getting the packet? Um, we can actually look at the log files to see if it does. So we test.log. Um, we don't have anything with a payload. So what is a level up from there? Could be the packet driver. Let's look at that. Um, so what we shall do is we will try another program. Well, sorry, this is getting sidetracked, but let's, let's just try and rule out MTCP by running an MTCP program. Um, and we're going to do netcat 10.0.2.2. And I think it was port 666. Um, I'm not sure if it was 2.2. Let's check out test pro uh, our test log. Um, 2.2. Okay, it does connect. So let's copy this data again and run it and see if it succeeds. Now it does. So what does that mean? It's working here. So for some reason it is getting interrupted and it is pa processing packets. So let's try and do set log file equals nc.log and set debugging equals 127. And then let's run netcat again and give it the same input and compare the logs. So let's do vimdiff test.log. dot slash mtcp and what did we call this one nc.log um it can't find that file oh, perhaps it's a sensitive Okay. Um, excuse me. It has a different version. Uh, is that just a compile time thing? Yes. Okay. So though this has the time at the side, I might've disabled that. So let's junk that out. So it connects, it gets a state established. It does not log the packet.
furthermore, it's not having like random garbage put in, but we'll worry about the, the packet for now. Um, hmm. We do have this here. Um, I'm starting to think we might have like really like, we're getting a lot of garbage here. Um, Like, it's not even logging the state here. Could it be that... We're just having straight up issues because... I don't know, maybe we've relocated something? This also says sending. So I guess when we get a packet, we have to process it. So process the packet um, that has length 44 and that's a TCP with payload of zero. Um, so IP TCP payload zero, but this one over here has a length of 450. So what we should probably do now is copy the netcat code and rule out that netcat is causing the issue. Um, what I actually might try doing is compiling with a large model uh, to exe files and stuff. Um, could this be because we're using a com file? So, let's go to code. Let's find the code here. We're going to find the make file. Um, we're going to find the make flags. Um, and we're not gonna, I guess we'll just go to tiny model and I don't know how I opened up the make file just now. Here we go. Um, and instead of dot com, we'll make it a dot exe. So bot dot com test dot exe. And we'll look at the W link arguments and say system DOS. So W make clean, uh, W make test.exe. MT. So MT is not a valid model. Um, it might be MX. I guess we'll just go with MS for now. Let's open up Firefox and search for Whatcom data module. Oh no, we can probably just search it up um, here. I think it would be WPPP. And then it should tell us how to set the da uh, data model. M MS is small. Um, I think we'll do MC instead. 
So let's just cancel this. MC. Okay. So this should rule out if, I'm not sure what it would rule out, but it could give us a lead for what is causing issues. My cat is snoring on my bed. Should cat snore? Not snore. She's not snoring. She's just breathing. Breathing noises, sleeping noises, I, su I suppose, if you will. Okay, now let's run test.exe um, with our previous setup here. And now let's run our input again. Still nothing. So what we're now going to do is copy um, the netcat code from MTCP. And we shall see if that is possibly the issue. Um, I'm getting the feeling that this could possibly be due to any of the modifications I've made. Um, but we shall see. Um, let's copy the netcat.cp and the config file. Um, and so we'll just, we'll make a directory called, no, we won't bother with that. We'll just copy this over the test. Um, so test IO, we'll just rename that to uh, two test IO and then we'll rename this to test IO and we'll see if this can change anything. All right, so test, um, that didn't change anything. Probably because DOSBox does not, like maybe it's open to file descriptor or something. Um, let's just write over this file, I guess. Just to make sure. See, the mouse works here. I don't know. I don't get it. Okay, save, exit. Mm -hmm. So we haven't included DNS. So let's go back to our what would we call it? Our make file. Yes, that's the word. And change our TCP objects back to include DNS and things like that, that we removed because of how large they were. UDP max callbacks. Um, we'll dump UDP actually. Let's just add DNS. Okay, well, DNS is not defined properly. Let's just rip out the DNS code. Um, that might work. We might just have to hammer this netcat code into submission. Uh, DNS, no, DNS, DNS, um, zero. 
drop the DNS stuff there. Zero. Okay. Let's try that. Wmate test.exe. Um, it's still including UDP and time diff. Um, UDP. Is time diff being included by? Yeah, so line 858. Um, just drop that. We don't care. So let's see if this works. I think that's the IP. Resolving server address. Um, how do we set the server address manually? It should say in this file. Server address equals that. So yeah. 10, 0, 2, 2. And then let's write that. Let's send a control break. See if that does anything. Server resolved to 43 point. All right, that's not what we want. So test.exe help, test.exe target, uh, test 6666. Do we still have that port open with something there? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we might have to delete that stuff too. That's okay. I probably did this a long time ago. Okay, we've connected. So let's see, do we have the same error? Yes. Now, let's try replacing our TCP lib with whatever came with MTCP and see if that fixes the issue. Um, TCP lib, copy that back. And I'm aware that I, that my fix up code might be affecting that, but I just want to see if this will just help. Should have replaced the TCP ink file. Yeah, my bad.
Oops. Just want to make test.exe for now. Okay, let's try this. So test.exe target doesn't matter as long as we have the port open. I've hard coded the IP address. Let's paste all this in and see if it does anything. No. Okay. Do I enjoy devoting my program to Satan? Um, a little bit. So maybe the issue is in the MTCP configuration. Okay. This is fine. Let's, let's replace mtcp.config with the one from the netcat. And see how that goes. So if this works, then that probably means a configuration error, perhaps. It's unclear. We might have to start diffing the configuration. But it also could be just that it doesn't support small buffers or it's overriding something in memory. There's a lot of things this could be, but we're going to be patient. And we're going to chill out. Big chill pills. Yeah, chill juke stream. I do wonder. I do wonder about this is IP fragmentation, but we'll see. We might have to just start changing one by one things like, uh, well, removing, well, no, we probably want to start changing the amount of packet buffers. Maybe ARP max entries. It wants to compile with DNS, which we're not going to enable. We're not going to use UDP or DNS or ICMP. So let's try that again. I think that should work. Um, 
can we just go to turbo speed? Will that help? We don't have time. I think that was an error about time. It's unclear. Does this keep compiling after errors? Not too sure. Okay, so it seems to have run. Um, so let's run test.exe target test 6666. Let's try pasting in all this again. Okay, so that works. So how do we break it? Um, so let's start by trying Let's see, turn our packet buffers down to what we've had before. Um, let's see, vim diff mtcp.configs. So, I'm gonna have to start copying stuff over. Oops. So packet buffers, let's try and change that to four and up max entries to three. Um, I did turn off IP fragmentation and let's change the socket ring size and turn off TCP listen code. So I don't think that stuff should have an effect, but we'll see. So we're turboing. It's starting to rain outside, I think. Yep. I know you get asked this a lot, but will you ever play Desert Bus on stream? Probably not, no. I made like a really bad uh, parody of Desert Bus once. I'd play that on stream, maybe. So let's run our test thing again. Um, and let's see if it has the same issue. No, I, I tried developing games. So let's turn off IP fragments. Could that be the key? We just don't know, do we? I mean, you know what? I know I'm gonna get caught a coward, but that break was good. I need to do more breaks in streams. They're very nice. Okay, let's try again. Let's see if this has the same issue. No. So it might be purely related to um, packet buffer length. So let's dump that down then to, um, what would we call it? So it would be 420 plus 40 plus 14. Four seven four. 
Let's try that. I hope I'm actually updating the configuration. Okay. Let's run the test again. Close that file, close that file. What's your favorite canid and why is it the Southwestern Coyote? Not sure, it really gives me joy to just watch that. Okay, so the packet buffer length is what's causing this issue, I believe. So, now that we have that information and we have some stock code, let's dig into that. Let's play with that a little. Why would it be like that? Oh, it drops packets that are bigger than the buffer. So that makes sense, I guess. Well, I don't know why I didn't, I don't know why I didn't read that before. Um, but that doesn't explain, let's run our test program on the test. Um, so let's go to CD. How do you feel about monster girls? Would you date one? No, we need to set... Okay, hang on a second. Let's run netcat again. Or is it in this terminal? Or this one? Yes, it's that one. We should be able to make it not drop. By setting the slurp. Uh, okay. Let's move our test code back. CD test. Move test I dot CPP dot, dot NC move to test IO test I dot CPP. All right. Um, and then let's change the mtcp.configuration file back and we'll set this to 14, uh, 15, 14, which is what it was at before. And we'll see if our tests succeed then. Want to go watch Ludwig stream Mario Party? I thought you can't stream Mario Party. I thought that was like Twitch illegal. I'm Twitch illegal. Why? Okay, so we're now going to run the test program again, and we're going to see if it behaves differently, giving a proper configuration. Uh, 
Um, what's it doing? Oops, let's run test.py. Oh, it's running wmake. Okay, and it's not, it doesn't have the correct files. So let's do not wmake. Uh, what is the wmake? This is not the test. Uh, oh, yeah. You can go make spaghetti. That's why I'm Twitch illegal. I don't like that reasoning. So all of our packet sizes work now. No, not yay. I didn't fix anything yet. Um, and we can see around 1680, even fragments, which is good. So what we shall do now is have slurp fragment stuff. Slurp is Twitch illegal, I believe. So let's go back to our DOSBox testing. And now let's try with a smaller MTU. My very loud trackball. Um, MTU equals 520, whatever. Um, then let's run the test again. In a terminal that I can do it in. So changing, changing the MTU here is causing issues. What if we set the MTU to 1500? It splits properly, I think. What if we change it to 500? Have I ever successfully done the splits? Not sure. I don't want to train with you.
Why is changing MRU cause issues? I just changed the MRU and that's causing issues too. But if I don't change anything, it works. Would I lick slurp? Hmm. I don't have an answer to that. What's the best thing I've ever licked? Not sure. So let's make a list of things we know. Changing MTU or MRU causes improper fragmentation. Although we haven't tested with really large packet sizes, like 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Can we make DOSBot send gigabyte sized images? Probably not. Now I'm actually gonna go back down to an MTU and we're just gonna, we're gonna see if changing IP fragmentation helps. Let's go back here. So we're gonna put IP fragments on And uh, will that help? Am I cold? No, I've got my trademark jumper on. Okay, let's try running the test again. Same issue. So we've got 200 bytes, 841 bytes, or 10 bytes cause issue. So,
is not fucking with us. Slurp is hellbent on ruining everything, it seems. But I'm not sure. I'm just, I'm not sure. We have the correct packet sizes. Let's run DOSBox with logging on. If I might just have to make, I might just have to make a call and say that it's not worth debugging this and that we might just have to use more than 64K of memory. Would I make a pets cop too? I'm not sure. Sorry, I was just gazing off into the distance thinking about my life. Okay, um, let's do run.sh test.exe. That doesn't connect. Um, I feel physically sick from this, to be honest. Um, I feel drained. My mental health is declining heavily from slurp. Um... I might be losing hair from slurp. I just don't know. Anyway, let's power through. Let's turn on, where's my terminal that has all the stuff on it? So we do netcat, we do dosbox, and then we just jump a bunch of shit in it, I guess. Um, oops, I didn't set the MTU, did I? So we'll set the MTU to 400. And we will just try that again. So test.exe. What do you think really happened in Marble Hornets? I don't know. What is this? Sent packet zero 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 zero. What the fuck?
maybe I need to have the packet here, like, um, I don't know, maybe this is the issue here. I'm trying to send a null packet. That could be why it's hanging. doesn't make any sense to me. None of this makes any sense to me. Okay, let's copy this junk, run test.exe, paste it in, paste it in, paste it in, junk, 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 paste, paste, paste. Interesting. Do I like throwing garbage into slurp hell? I don't know. It's a living. So did I just fix a bug there? Not the bug, but a bug. Let's see, maybe it won't hang now. If it doesn't hang, then perhaps, perhaps things could be okay. So instead of doing expect it there, instead of returning immediately, let's just continue. Interesting. So we are dropping packets. Did we make assembly two? Not too sure. So it seems that we fixed the hanging bug, which was just my bug. Let's put back our junk how it was. Um, let's also check if, if the test log is corrupted. It looks a lot better. It's a pretty Chad looking test log. It doesn't have any corruption. Okay, let's put this all back. Put back our broken MTCP. Would I eat a bug? No. Uh, maybe before I went vegan, I would have tried, possibly. Okay, so let's make clean test.com. I think it's supposed to be a com file. Um, we can keep it as test.exe for now, I think. Do I think bugs are cute or spooky? Yes. Hey, Aria, what's up? Don't worry, this is still, this is still hell. I feel like I've been sentenced here. Like this isn't, this isn't fair. Would I let grasshoppers crawl on my face? Honestly, I don't know. If they were grasshoppers, maybe. Okay. So let's run our test script again. 
if we go up, up. So no more hangs, but we do skip packets. In fact, huh. Is it not that we're, shit, fuck. Sorry, I'm just angry. Fuck. Sorry, I'm sorry you have to see me like this, everyone. <laughs> Jukes figured it out. No, I did not figure it out. I wish I did. I hope I have figured it out. Okay. Let's... What? Let's jump my MTCP stuff dot back. How did that not fail to compile? I thought I have the buffers statically allocated. Oh, okay. I think, no, that would be TCP stuff. I don't know. Let's try it again. Oh shit, I didn't change the thing I wanted to. Um, we're gonna change the packet buffers up to 10. Would you rather be in a dark room or in a glass room hovering above your town? Uh, I don't know. What kind of questions are these? Like, what's wrong with you? Okay, let's try the test again. It's skipping packets because we're not getting a transmit buffer. In fact, it's often skipping packets. Why do we not have that? It's for a project. What the hell is wrong with you? Max is 40. Okay, let's set it up to 40 then. We have the memory, we can afford it. So, sake. could it be that the issue is that it is getting the packets this time for some reason? I don't remember even what I changed for that. Did I change anything? No, I changed it so it didn't hang. Maybe... No, that doesn't make sense either. Although maybe it does. Okay, why is it skipping a packet? So if we don't have any XMIT buffs, it's going to skip the packet. Would you rather your feet get swapped or your hands? What the fuck? No, I guess feet. 
Ah, uh, okay. Gentle, relaxing, relaxing sounds. Okay. All right. What the fuck is happening? What am I listening to? Nothing. I don't have any music going. Okay. Is it your heavy breathing? No. What? Okay, we're going to we're going to play it cool. So this skips a lot of packets. Let's try it with just say 2000. Uh, sorry. Uh, I know 600. God, that closes it immediately. All right. So let's try that with 1600. So it skipped two packets. It skipped sending two packets. Which means there were two extra packets. So let's try and math this out. 920 plus Why, why do we not have enough packet buffers? What, okay, hang on. We're sharing incoming buffers with outgoing buffers. But for some reason, we don't have enough buffers. I set packet buffers to be pretty high There's max XMIT buffs. What if we set that to 40? Yes, TC buffer get XMIT buff. Perhaps adding more XMIT buffs will help. Perhaps this software was never designed to handle fragmentation like this. Okay, let's try again. It's still skipped packets. Would you rather have a horse's head or a horse's body? I guess a horse's body Okay, why is get xmit buff failing? Let's go to TCP live and TCP and let's look for get xmit buff, which is probably not here. I think it's in include 
TCP. So, obviously, we don't have any free XMIT buffers. Why would that be? Oh, shit. What if I slam this down here? So after we send stuff, maybe we should, I don't know, send the packets off immediately. That could be a good idea. I'll go to the birthday party. Who else is going to be there? Okay. Yeah, no, I'll go then. If it's just you, I'll go to the birthday party. It's still skipping packets. What the hell? How? How is this possible? Send slurp to the dumpster. This isn't slurp, this is MTCP. Get XMIT buff is so... Return XMIT buff? So when I enqueue it, it gets put there. It sends it. I'm exhausting get XMIT buff. How? What's free XMIT buffers? Number of buffers in the list? I only have two buffers. What if we up that to four? TCP max XMIT buffers. So that's max, that's not the amount that is allocated. Okay, so this is my code being a little strange then, I guess. Still the same issue. Okay, fine. We're going to have, I guess, 10 buffers. And I guess we'll set that to, uh, yep, 10. So we should never run out of them. Sick buffers, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah.
What the fuck is happening? Do I need to restart this for some reason? Is it holding open wrong file descriptors? Because it kind of seems like whatever I'm doing is doing nothing. Let's try this. Why would it skip a packet there? Why would it skip a packet? Is there anything in the log I can read? It's not sending packets. Don't need to tell it to send it. Should this be packet process multi? Why is that not updated? What the hell? Why I saved, I changed that file and it doesn't get updated. Test. Test IO, yeah. Do you think if I devoted slurp to God it would work better? Probably. Let's delete object test test dot object and let's w make this again. Packet process multi has not been declared. Uh, malt. I guess four. Is that the maximum amount of packets that you can process? All right, so let's find our netcat service and let's have it start and then let's dump our stuff in here did that fix it huh Uh, 
Uh, I don't know what's happening anymore. Let's try it with the test. It might be too short of a timeout. Let's try five. Everyone loves a good long timeout. It only got 1260. That's closer. I mean, what's that doing? 1600? That's not a real number. Okay, so is it skipping the packets? All right, how about this? While buff equals no, you process packets, yeah? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm a okay. I can probably free this buffer too. Um, the packet we get. Is that affecting it? So while we have no XMIT buffs, Why is it not sending packets? Why is it not sending packets? How is the buffer so small? Why do we not have a big buffer? Why is it hanging here? Why is the buffer null? Why is it null? How did we run out of, out of buffers? What is it setting the amount of buffers to? Does it say in the log? It doesn't say how many buffers it has. No space in ring buff for the packet. What, what fucking lies is this?
Why would you lie to me about this? How dare you? How dare you? Packet buffers 40 times the packet buffers length. We have enough packet buffers why why is there the audacity that you would even pretend to me that you do not have the appropriate amount of space why why would you drop a packet when you have 40 ring buffers that you can choose from. You have 40 ring buffers. I haven't sent anything near that. It should be impossible to exhaust your ring buffers, yet here we are. Here we are. Process packet data. What does process packet data do? I assume this is process two. What? So, it has a ring buffer in incoming. Is this possibly here? What is packet RB size? Is it perhaps here? No. Is it perhaps somewhere else? Oh, it is packet buffers plus one, which should be, if we go look at here, it should be 40. So where are our buffers? Where are the buffers? 
How are we running out of buffers? We queue the packet here. We have this, this function called has room. Where is has room? It's in the ring buff thing. So entries, ring buffer size. How big is the ring buffer? TCP socket ring size. What is that set to? Two. It is two. Let's try this now. Let's try this now. Again, I'm not mad. I just want to make that clear. Failed creating TCP buffers. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay, let's put it down to eight. You know, a lot of people might be mad at this point. I wouldn't blame them. I wouldn't blame them at all, actually. Some people would think this is a waste of time. I wouldn't blame them. What's that?
you know. Things might look grim. However, you believe in me? Yep, that's fair. I used to believe in me too. Okay, let's see if there's any... Oh, that paste it, okay. Let's paste the alphabet a few times. So... Okay, there is one last thing we want. I don't know. I don't know if it's worth debugging this further. Like... Like, is there a point? Like, if we run the test... We're not losing packets. Like... What even is this? 1660 sometimes it times out we're losing something i think i'm going to end the stream here because it has been too long and i feel defeated Um, we're in some form of madness. And, well... I think I know what's going on. Or kind of. You know what... I don't know. I have a feeling that Slurp is actually mangling the packets here. But that doesn't make any sense when things work fine when the M with the buffer set properly. Uh, although Did I actually set the MTU to be smaller here? Let's try that. Yeah, so the MTU is 400 there. We have all the buffers. There's enough buffers. But yet, it drops packets. Hmm. 
Do I need fragmentation? I don't know what I need. It's just tiring. <sighs> like, what do you even do at this point? If we look at make an RPG, no. If we look at this, we're sending all our packets. What the fuck is this? No, 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 no. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? Why is it returning shit that is 16, 16, 80, 16 kilobyte packet size? What? Did I finally get fiber to the house? I don't know. What is this? The numbers seem to match up so far. One of them caused a really strange error. Which one was it? Four... Four thousand? Then eight three nine caused an issue? Let's try that again. 4,839 and then we'll add like uh, all tests equals 4,839 plus all tests so it doesn't like close the window immediately How does it not think that's defined? Right. Okay, off we go. What happened before? Oh, 
Oh, it was 1680, then 4000. What? Got TCP payload length, 16, 16, 8. What? What's happening? Something's mega ruined here. We're going to have to print some more. Um, so what is the IP payload length? Um, and what is the TCP uh, H length? Wait, what? That kind of works now? What? Oh, shit. Shit. Hang on. Let's not worry about freeing that until later. Because obviously that's, that's bad move. TCP payload length 16685? What? IP payload length? Is this because I'm doing the multi? Let's try doing that to single. And... Oh, I double freed the buffer there. Shit. Shit. <gasps> what? It's working? What the fuck? What's happening? What's 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 going to go wrong? Huh? Uh, what? Okay, and if we set the MTU to something super high, that should error and time out, correct? Mm-hmm. But if we set it to 420, I guess... Huh? What? Are you kidding me? What the fuck? It works? What the fuck is happening? Okay.
All right. Now I'm going to, I'm going to quit for now. Um, I'm going to control C through this carefully and see what happened. Disk code was broken. Oh, I was double freeing a buffer there. I was freeing it here and processing a packet and then freeing it. Oh, shit. I was freeing a packet, then processing it and then freeing a packet again, which I've just had input. All right. Okay. Let's speed up this test program a little bit. Look at this, isn't this beautiful? Isn't this beautiful? We officially did it. Kind of. We solved a problem. I don't know what the, what, I know that we had the problem with the timing out. And we, we solved a lot of problems today. We solved dropping packets because we didn't have the space in the ring buffer. We solved timing out because of that. And we seem to have solved this. So it could just be that we just went through so many issues that were all contributing towards this pile of trash. But it seems to work. Um, so that's it for now. Next stream, we will be, I guess, doing the same thing, but for input or whatever, like, um, getting data to the bot, uh, from the bot. But we do need to get this cut down to smaller buffers and stuff. Maybe we can do that now. Yeah, let's do that. I'm just cleaning up my glasses. All right, let's have a little bit more pain and then we can safely say we've conquered this. So. Go back to packet and undo our changes. Let's go to TCP and undo our changes. Um, let's go to packet.h. See, if I version controlled this, it would be so easy to just figure this out. Not figure this out, but fix it. Okay, let's change all this back. Um, and let's see if this, well, let's change this back to com and have the linker. Slurp is getting paddled with none of the sex. This, this is all my problem. Okay. So drive C, uh, code. Shit. I guess we can edit it this way. Um, code, um, W link, and then we'll put system XE. And then let's do W make clean. Then W make test.com. And let's see if we can tweak this to get it to work. 
and if it does then then we we've we've solved today's issue in a record four and a half hour stream shit it's system dos isn't it no system com i think What have we learned today? Anything? Anything at all? I don't know. Don't give up. This looks like it's gonna crash so hard. Yeah. That really should be system. Is that system com? What? Why is it having issues with compiling it? Debug all system com w link. Maybe it's system dos. Okay. All right. Let's run the test now and see how bad it crashes. Mm hmm. So we're dropping packets there, probably. So what we're going to do is edit. Um, not the packet buffers. I suppose we could, we want to put up the ring buffer, I think. Or, hmm. Let's just run that again and see, did we see anything related to dropping packets? There's too much junk on the screen. All right. Remove that. And we'll see if we skipped any packet. Yes. So we need more ring buffers, I think. Do we have space for that? Oh, we have to change the memory segment type as well. That's another thing. Okay. So we need to up the ring buffer size. So we can send more packets, yeah? Let's pray that we have enough space for this. Without creating TCP buffers, right. So we need to update size of TCP buffer. So it's failed creating TCP buffers. Failed. What? Oh, TCP socket ring size. 
that's the only thing we changed, right? Oh, yeah, and so that turns into XMIT buffs, I think. We go up here. We have XMIT buffs, and we just need to make this a bit bigger. So, four. Please fit. I have an irrational want to fit in 64K. <gasps> okay. Let's try running the test now. It's not the test. Okay. Oh, it freezes. Here we go. Must be power of two. Here we go. Here's the issue. Uh, okay. Hi, what application is there for DOS these days? For programming it or just in general using it? Um, do you mean like DOS systems, like uh, emulators or like, what do you, what program type do you mean? Oh, that just exited the Z drive. Great. Of course. Um, so that has to be a power of two. You're mainly familiar with basic rudimentary DOS as seen as Windows. Yeah, so DOS is an old system. Oh, only familiar. Um, so the DOS in Windows isn't really real DOS anymore, um, or kind of is. It's a bit weird. Um, DOSBox is good. Um, as for programs that run in DOS, I think just like Microsoft Word, um, old programs like that. I don't actually know that many. I'm trying to make a DOS bot, but this is a nightmare. Let's have this compile, Let's see if it compiles. Does it run? Can we quit? No, it seems like it's frozen. There's just probably not enough room. Yeah, you can still make batch files that run on Windows. Um, it's pretty neat.
Okay, I'm about to end the stream, unfortunately. Um, but... You use JavaScript to code for Photoshop. That's pretty cool. Okay, so let's, let's have a little serious talk about the bot here. It's not going to fit in 64K. It can barely have any buffers in 64k um so we're gonna move up to 128k we're going to have 64k of code and 64k of data and we'll do that next stream and Uh, I think I'm fairly satisfied with what it, we've done today. Although it is hell. All this is hell and pointless, but it's not less or more pointless. Good job. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know if we have anyone to raid. Let's see. No one to raid on my stuff. That's true. Nothing is pointless if you learn from it. And I've learned a lot. Kaz, you don't stream. You know what? We're raiding no one. In fact, I'm going to give you an ad. So... Um, thanks for dropping by. Um, I don't know. Have a good November. <laughs>